The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Outside of Gill Coliseum, historic venue, home to what will be some fun basketball this weekend. First round matchup, six seed Nebraska, 11 seed Texas A&M. Here are your starting lineups brought to you by Capital One. So big news on the Texas A&M side, Lauren Ware, who has started 30 games this year for Texas A&M, will not play. Had been nursing an injury. She'll be a no-go for the Aggies. For Nebraska, this starting lineup has been so confident together, coming off what was a heartbreaking loss at the end of the day in the Big Ten title game against Iowa in overtime before knowing they would be a sixth seed, but turn the page to get here, and now they are here. You see Lauren Ware, unfortunately not playing. She would be a force down low for them, and an excellent rebounder, about eight rebounds per game. Excellent rebounder, the anchor, the defense, the rim protector, shot blocker. You need that when you're going up against Markowski, but I'll tell you what, the front court of this Aggie squad, Kula Bali, she's going to be playing at the four. You got MJ coming off the bench. You see Barker right there about to jump the ball. Those are, they're going to be the X factors. They're just going to have to do a little bit more in order to stop Markowski. Maggie Tiemann, Timothy Daly, Carla Fountain, the officials, two teams that didn't make the NCAA tournament last year back in the big dance and so excited for it. First possession will go to Texas A&M. Two for two for a jump right. ball violation. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's been the theme <laughs> so far in Corvallis. We'll get a clean jump ball at some point. But more importantly right now, Texas A&M will get us a roll in here. Sahara Jones, maybe one of those players that will have to step up with nowhere. Janaya Barker, of course, will have to as well. Came up short on her opening shot. Alexis Markowski, 19 double-doubles this season, ninth in D1 basketball. Jazz Shelley played with an enormous level of swagger and confidence in that Big Ten tournament. They go to Markowski, that is what she does. And that's way too easy. Got to be in a quarter denial at least. Try to, can't let her front you and get that easy of a look right there in the paint. Asia, you and I have talked about it. This Nebraska team, they're playing their best basketball right now when it matters most. Over the last month, there's a beautiful steal from Logan Nisley. Freshman who's been playing very well all the way to the rim. Yeah, Logan Nisley inserted into the lineup when Darren White got hurt. She's been starting since February 2nd and has been meteorite peaking at the right time in her play. That's been the theme of this team, peaking at the right time. The Cornhusker fan base has traveled here to Corvallis. Kula Bali, she can do that. Markowski secures the rebound, won't be her last. But that's what the Cornhuskers want to do. They're going to force the Aggies to take tough outside shots. For Texas A&M, you see their head coach, Joni Taylor, in her second season at Texas A&M. It was a 10-win jump from last year. They went from nine wins to 19 wins. Essentially played what was a play-in game while they were on the bubble, entering the SEC tournament against Mississippi State in the opening round. Came out on top. Mississippi State didn't make it. Texas A&M did. That's going to be a foul from behind, and Markowski will go to the free throw line. There's Amy Williams, the head coach for Nebraska. Recent contract extension announced, and she deserves it. And celebrating a birthday today, by the way, while trying to get an NCAA tournament win. Birthday, she's got the birthday shirt on, the dazzles. Looking great. She's really excited about that, too. She, she told us that her and her husband went for a walk this morning, a little birthday coffee walk, as you see, a birthday tweet. And by the time they got downstairs in the hotel, they saw their players already drawing up notes and questions for defensive coverage assignments and whatnot. So she knows her players are amped up, celebrating her birthday, and they're trying to celebrate what would be her first NCAA tournament win as the Nebraska head coach. Off to a 6 nothing start. Barker couldn't get a much-needed bucket. Thrown away, looking down low for the Big Ten Freshman of the Year, Natalie Potts. 
Baggies need to continue and just try and be as aggressive as possible in their attack downhill into the paint. They're settling, missing a lot of outside shots. What are the keys on this end with no wear? Nowhere, nowhere in the paint, but you still got to find a way. It doesn't have to necessarily just be a post entry in order to get into the paint. They got to be aggressive on their attack downhill. You're right. Normally they do rely on where getting the ball inside and out, but you can just attack off the dribble. The Aggies are athletic. They have that advantage. Lauren Ware is also a player who has NCAA tournament experience into the corner. India Rogers. Loose ball battle. Aggies get it back. Sahara Jones now tied up by Potts. And this will go back the opposite direction to Nebraska. It's an 0 for 4 start from the field for Texas A&M. Nebraska's hit two of their first three. They had to run all the way to the Big Ten title. Came up short at a lead with two minutes to go in overtime against Iowa. Iowa, of course, one of the number one seeds in this NCAA tournament. Potts, second chance. Step through a foul, and it looks like it's going to go back to the Aggies. Yes, I believe they called Markowski with the over the back, a push on the glass there. Have another look at it here. The shot goes up and you see them battling. Yeah, I guess they're just going to call a push there with Markowski. I didn't really see it, but. Asia, that is two early fouls on Alexis Markowski. She goes to the bench. Nisley gets her second steal, pulls up, transition. Rebound to Jones to so keep an eye now on how Nebraska operates as Jessica Petrie checks in, freshman from Gold Coast, Australia. One of uh, what's been a stretch of good players from down under for this Nebraska program in recent years. Jazz Shelley, their point guard, also from Australia. Another throwaway, though, here. Joni Taylor told us there's certain things we can't do as Texas A&M and turning it over to slimmer margin for error with no lower and wear on the floor. Absolutely, and they're going to have to continue to defend, rebound, try to get out and transition as much as they can, attack it, try and get to the free throw line. I think that's where the Aggies are going to see the most success specifically on the offensive end. Texas A&M has gone through a number of different injuries, and as we've talked about throughout the week, they've happened at different times of their season. That storyline, unfortunately, playing up once again today. Absolutely, and that's why Coach Joni said it. She said, listen, she said, we're not phased by it because this is unfortunately what we've been used to. And you even look at them last season, they played with seven players for the majority of the season, and even without Janiah Barker. Aggies back in the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2021. They made a sweet 16 that year. Sahara Jones is on the floor, 24 in black, has the most experience from that team. KK Jones on the floor. She was also on that team. There's KK Green, corner three. It goes down. When you talk about Green with that having that experience, she's one of those players last season that was able to stay healthy. So she played a lot of minutes, even started. So you know, coming into this lineup, she started this season as well. So a very experienced veteran player. Down low, a quick answer, and Jazz Shelley able to leak to the rim off a nice feed. Nebraska, all the players have such high IQ, they move the ball well, so you have to be disciplined defensively or they'll punish you for it. Here's KK Green, one of the longest tenured Aggies, was looking for another long range shot. And we get a foul call down low. The discipline, high tempo offense that Nebraska comes with. You cannot sleep here. Just an excellent pass from Potts to Shelly. Let's check out how they are fueling the run. Brought to you by Wendy's. This is Texas A&M's celebration on Selection Sunday when they found out they would be getting in. They were on the bubble going into the SEC tournament. Got a big win there, and then Nebraska. Asia, you talked with both coaches and 
the genuine emotion you see in these shots. That's very real. Absolutely. I mean, I've been in positions where, I mean, obviously you're always excited to have it called, but, you know, you got to put on the emotion when you're on ESPN and they're doing the uh, the selection show. But like you said, both teams, I talked to the coach, they said this was genuine emotion that they felt, and, you know, well-deserved when you talk about what they've gone through this season to be able to put themselves in this position. KK Green, quick drive, nearly got her own offensive board, then a tie up down low, and the arrow would keep it at this end. Mentioned those celebrations, and it was uh, Kendall Moriarty's gritty that really jumped out in the Nebraska celebration at the front. Amy Williams loved it, her team loved it, the journey they've taken to get back here. India Rogers able to drain a three. It was absolutely imperative that they got her back for the SEC tournament, now getting more and more comfortable coming off an injury that kept her out for a chunk of February. Absolutely. You talk about her IQ, the way she's able to push pace, pass the ball, and score it like you saw there it is huge for the Aggies, especially on the offensive end. And I will say this, with Markowski not in the game, it takes less pressure off the interior on both ends of the floor, so the a and they need to take advantage. Markowski scored a quick early four points, then picked up her second foul. The Nebraska forward who has 19 double-doubles this year. Averaging a career high in points, rebounds. Has been spectacular in big games too. Calling for it, unable to get the roll with Petrie who's filling in right now for Markowski. Darian White has also checked in for Nebraska. The NCAA Championship Final Four weekend starts April 5th with the Final Four and continues Sunday, April 7th when we crown a champ. Every game is on the ESPN family of networks. For more info, go to NCAA.com. Your home for all 90 NCAA championships. These teams are part of the Regional 1 in Albany. Oregon State, the host of this first and second round. They beat Eastern Washington. So the winner of this matchup will play Oregon State on Sunday. Only location in the entire bracket with four teams that did not make the tournament last season. It's going to be resiliency location. Down low, Potts. A resilient location. I'll tell you what, all teams that are just super hungry, super anxious, and excited to be able to continue on in this dance. Barker with space. Gave her too much space. That's a great look when you see Barker hitting and connecting from outside. She's another one of those versatile players that can play inside and out. An a and team that doesn't rely a ton on the three, but that's an added bonus for them when they're going down. Cox is in trouble in the paint. This is going to stay on this end. A team that doesn't rely on the three, but are more than capable of hitting one when it's needed. I think that's the huge difference we see there with Parker. You don't want to settle for the shots that you're given, but if it's a good shot and you take it, you shoot it with confidence, it's a great shot, and that's exactly what the Aggies need, those looks inside and out. Texas A&M in wins this year, averaging about 75 points per game. In losses, 58 points per game. The glass has also played a key factor in wins and losses for Texas A&M this year. You mentioned with Markowski on the bench with two fouls. You got to take advantage. Allen Hake's shot off the mark. Parker right on that note secures the rebound. Rodgers against a good defender in white. Trying to get it back to her. Another good denial. Green goes down low, Parker, a strong move. I was, right there. I was waiting for Rodgers to get in the paint and bully somebody because she's got the strength and size advantage. Oh, what a pull up at the opposite end from White. Quick answer for the grad student who has some NCAA tournament experience with Montana State, transferred into Nebraska this year. Tap away from Petrie, it'll stay at this end. More of what you want to see in this replay from Texas A&M. We just saw Barker hit an outside shot. You talk about the dynamic of her game, being able to score outside and inside. You see there the bully basketball. When you have the mismatch, when you know that you can get it done inside and using your power, that's exactly what you have to do. A&M team fell to South Carolina in the SEC tournament after 
that went over Mississippi State. Of course, unbeaten South Carolina's. You get a travel call there. Five early turnovers for Joni Taylor's team. The adjustments that they're making, you mentioned kind of a position switch for Aisha Koulibaly, but back where she felt comfortable during her days at Auburn before transferring here. Absolutely. This is where she's comfortable at the four position. She can play out on the three, just plays wherever she's needed. She's the X factor. She's going to be key in terms of just being able to play inside and out. A throwaway there for Nebraska. It, it's two very contrasting styles. What I loved what you said about this matchup, there's not a team that Nebraska would typically see in the Big Ten quite like Texas A&M. And there's not a team in the SEC that Texas A&M would see that you can kind of mirror Nebraska. Absolutely. So that's why they're trying to play their best basketball for their team and, and execute in that regard. Texas A&M going to get a second crack at this. Parker, she'll have to be a go-to today. Third chance now, Sahara Jones. Mentioned she was on that last NCAA tournament team for Texas A&M, along with KK Green. Uh, foul called. They get Nebraska. Monica Stewart. Nebraska has six players who were on their last NCAA tournament team. Nebraska's last NCAA tournament win came in 2014. So it's been a decade for the Cornhuskers, and they want to get that out of their heads and move on. But early on here, a tight one with Texas A&M. That's what we expected as MJ Johnson is at the free throw line. The Aggies' biggest focus, it starts with their defense. Their defense is their hallmark rebounding their hallmark. They can get those things done and then execute on the offensive end. They can come out with a win. 12-12, 90 seconds to go in the first quarter. Shelly still trying to get involved offensively. And I want to say this to Nebraska, so many weapons, they like to get up quick shots, so it's not necessarily always a bad shot when it comes quick. Those are the looks that they're used to and that they like to get. They have some shot makers. Got a travel called on this end. That's her second travel there, Koulibaly. It'll go down as the sixth turnover already for Texas A&M. Has kind of evened out with their work on the glass so far to earn some second and third chance opportunities. Jazz Shelley averaging 21 points per game over her last five. Playing her best basketball in March. Plenty of time. Whips it down low to Stewart. And she's able to get the shooter's roll. The senior from Minnesota. Played in her home state in the Big Ten tournament, which took place in Minneapolis. The navigation to the rim there from Tanea Hilton didn't turn into two. And a foul called. It's going to go back the opposite way here. Stick with Nebraska. They get Koulibaly on the call. Koulibaly had 32 points, uh, career high, in their SEC tournament loss to South Carolina. She's also playing some of her best basketball right now. They'll need her to stay out of foul trouble today, though, with the already limited depth in the front court due to the Lauren Ware injury not playing today. A player who's played and started 30 games for Texas A&M this season. Two-second difference game clock and shot clock. Two-point lead for Nebraska. Hake still navigating, trying to get the best shot. One-legged runner from Shelley. Still time here for Texas A&M. Half-court heave. Off the mark from Sahara Jones. Two points separating Nebraska and Texas A&M after one quarter of play in Corvallis. First round action. Both of these teams trying to punch a ticket to play Oregon State in the second round. Been a fun start to it through one quarter so far. More action coming up on ESPNU. Time for the Need to Know brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods. So this not only a matchup in the women's NCAA tournament first round, but also the men's tournament first round 
And the Aggies defeated Nebraska on the men's side earlier today. The very rare double of women and men playing each other first round of the NCAA tournament. On top of that, former Nebraska AD Trev Alberts introduced as the new Texas A&M AD earlier this week. So some <laughs> crossover in so many different ways. Trev Alberts had some fun with it on Twitter earlier this week. But interesting, interesting ties. And then you just happen to get the women and men both playing in the first round. Aggies clearly looking to take after, do what their men were able to do. Buzz Williams just trying to take this A&M men's program and build it. Get an offensive foul there called on Texas A&M. Got to like to start for Texas A&M without Lauren Ware. I mean, this is what they're used to. We talked about yep. it time and time of just playing through different players with injuries, so different looks, different things missing, game in and game out. So everybody just has to step up and do a little bit more. Maddie Kroll in for Nebraska, the Omaha, Nebraska native. Nice steal there from Tanea Hilton. Read that well. Right at Shelley. Is there a call? Still waiting on what the call is. And it looks like it's going to be offensive. Have another look at it here. Yes, the refs are seeing that she was set up. You can move backwards. You just can't move forward. So this was one of our big question marks when Alexis Markowski is going to check back in with the two fouls. She'll certainly, of course, have to play smart defensively and offensively with those two fouls. They go to Markowski a lot down low and certainly should. Has been so productive for them all season. And again, even now that she's back in the game, Aggies, they can still take advantage. That is the player you want to attack on the offensive end. Nebraska tried to get out in a hurry there after they broke the press, and it led to a foul on Texas A&M. Yeah, Bowles trying to stay with her and grabs her on the arm. Bowles, a sophomore who was originally signed to go to Georgia, then followed Joni Taylor from Georgia to Texas A&M. Joni Taylor in her second season at A&M had multiple NCAA tournament appearances during her time at Georgia. Made the rare SEC to SEC school change. She has a lot of respect for this Nebraska team. Corner three, look, goes down for Logan Nisley. Continues her hot start. And it started there with Shelly. Had the mismatch with MJ on her. Was able to put pressure on that defense attack in the rim to find Nisley there in the corner. Nisley, one of the best freshmen in the Big Ten this year. At 13 points in that Big Ten title loss to Iowa. How about a quick answer at the opposite end from MJ Johnson? Yeah, MJ was given a whole lot of space. Dared her to shoot that shot. She was able to connect. Shelly, she can heat up in a hurry. A little strong. There's Markowski's presence. Nebraska fans on the edge of their seat with this call. I don't believe. You see, taking advantage of the mismatch here is Shelly. And that baseline drift pass, that is a hard pass to make. And she's able to execute and find Nisky on the corner. You talk about the prowess, the IQ of Shelly, and just her ability to play make. And then Nisky, she's just been outstanding freshman connecting from three. Yep. And, and by the way, that whistle was not a foul on Markowski. So she still got two. There's a foul on this end. And it's on Texas A&M. All the Cornhuskers can breathe now. You can breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> Moving screen there. Darian White and Natalie Potts in for Nebraska now. But their team up three. Nisley's had a good start to this one. Ran into some trouble on the baseline, though. White showcasing that electric speed of hers. And this will go back to Texas A&M. 
We mentioned these teams met up on the men's side as well in the first round. The NCAA Men's Basketball Championship continues on CBS, TBS, and TNT with the start of the second round tomorrow at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. For more information on tournament games and networks, go to NCAA.com. The Nebraska women and men both winning at least 22 games in the same season for the first time ever. It was the Texas A&M men, though, beating Nebraska in the men's bracket. And now the women's matchup taking place here in Corvallis, Oregon. First round. India Rogers tried to float that up high. And then a foul called on the rebound, which has been a physical start to this one in the paint. Very physical indeed. Lots of body there in the paint. Nothing called. And then, yeah, on the rebound. Got her there on the rebound. Just loss of body control. It's Barker there with the foul. So that's going to put Nebraska in the bonus. There's still 7-16 to go in the second quarter. Natalie Potts, an 82% free throw shooter. Big Ten freshman of the year. Her footwork in the paint is just so fun to watch. Alexis Markowski said, when we need something, Potts provides it. And she's so versatile. She's got the length, the IQ. Athletic, she's one of the better defenders with length for Nebraska. A unanimous choice for Big Ten All-Freshman. As the task of guarding Barker, not easy, and that's why. And one coming up for Janiah Barker. I love it. The Aggies take advantage, continue to be aggressive on your attack downhill. That's just the name of the game here. And who better to do it than Janiah Barker and one big body. She loves it. Momentum play here for the Aggies. She's got that infectious personality, infectious energy as well. You need that when you have a player down, just that extra boost in different ways. Barker elevated into an even higher role without her front court partner, Lauren Ware, in the lineup today. Two-point game. Inadvertent horn, they'll play through it. Kendall Foley in the game now for Nebraska. Setting the screen there for Nisley, who operates, couldn't finish. Rebound secured by Bulls. Straight away, very confident three-point try from Rodgers. Bulls the board, couldn't finish. She'll want that one back. How about a third chance? They get a travel call before the shot. Great effort, though, by Bulls, just staying with it. Asia, they're so athletic on the glass. You just see that when you watch them practice and now see them in person. Very athletic. And that's the culture that Coach Joni instilled in this program. You see that Georgia, that's what they did. They defended and they got on the glass, so nothing less. She brought that right over to College Station, Texas. Nice step through from White, and how about that roll with the left hand? White has dealt with some injuries, so just seeing her sort of shake the rust off and kind of get back into her groove. She's another key player who started initially prior to her injury, so just another talent, great defensive player as well. Bowles couldn't bury the three. Barker, another board, another foul on Nebraska. White is just very crafty, very nifty with the ball. I love it, the fake. Fake me out and roll it in. So right now, Barker has been feasting on the glass. Markowski's on the bench with the two fouls. Did come back in, then went back to the bench. Just under six to go in the opening half. Markowski had an early four, and the fouls kind of turned her into a non-factor for the time being. Ulabali played it back out. Rogers open three, couldn't cash in. Good look. 
Joni Taylor talked about white speed. Kicks it out. That is why they were afraid of white speed because she can find players in transition. That time it's Nisley cashing in. Right on the money. The tempo changes when white is in the game and her ability to push the basketball, put pressure on that transition defense and find open players. Williams trying to answer. Easier board than it has been in the last several possessions for Nebraska. The guards got to take a, a page out of Barker's book and be aggressive on their attack and try to at least get to the free throw line. Speaking of aggressive and getting to the free throw line, Darren White will do just that. Nebraska just getting the shots they want. Change of pace with Darian White in the game and the freshman not playing like a freshman, hitting it from beyond the arc. Now it's time to get more brought to you by Geico. Janaya Barker, she's got about half of the Texas A&M points so far. Yeah, it's been all Barker, and I think the biggest difference between her and the rest of her teammates, she is taking what the defense gives her. She's not settling for outside shots. We saw her hit the three, but she's being aggressive on her attack as well, just showing her strength, able to get to the free throw line. So the rest of the Aggies, they need to follow suit and take a page out of her book. Has been crashing the glass as well offensively. See her numbers so far tonight. Don't need a lot from her today. This Texas A&M team back in the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2021. They advanced to the Sweet 16 that year. It'll be Darian White at the line here for Nebraska. They're taking a peek right now over at the monitors. Our officiating crew of Maggie Teeman, Timothy Daly, and Carla Fountain. They're checking who a foul was on at the 717 mark, if we heard correctly there. Now they're going to come over and tell us to confirm that. They are checking when a foul and who a foul took place on. Looking back at the 717 mark. There was at one point some discrepancy on in arena scoreboard versus stats of a foul earlier in the quarter. So that's what they're trying to tidy up right now. Great atmosphere here instead of Gil Coliseum. Jason Ross Jr. and Asia Ellison with you. Second to two games tonight in first round action here in Corvallis. You can hear this crowd waiting for some more hoops to start up. Asia first game was like a party. We had a record for attendance. Continuing on into the second game, we've had mascots dancing. The live mascot, though, Texas A&M, as you know very well, didn't make the trip. Little Red, who's very big, did make the trip for <laughs> Nebraska. By the way, you have had mascot experience. Absolutely. When I was in high school, I was a Gator. That was my way of getting out of <laughs> PE. Well worth the experience. I had so much fun. I specifically did soccer, so... I was very hot, but you know, I, I did a lot of theater, so I've always been a very animated uh -huh. and theatrical. I did cartwheels and everything. And I feel like there are different mascot experiences. Like Little Red, for example, has this big inflated costume, very tricky to dance in and whatnot. 
but then you have your natural normal costumes in say a 90 degree soccer game <laughs> which i feel is harder no disrespect here to little red but it, he kind of gets to bounce around indoor literally bounce it's around literally all, yeah, it's all in the bounce it's all in the bounce it's all in the bounce <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that foul they're checking on, they originally called it on India Rogers. So again, still trying to confirm who it is exactly on. And now we're going to get some word here. So we were told the discrepancy is how many fouls Janiah Barker has for Texas A&M is what they're specifically checking on. So we're being told that it, it says on the in arena scoreboard that she has three. Was incorrectly recorded. Number two from Texas A&M has three fouls. Number one has zero fouls. So India Rogers has no fouls. It was originally labeled as being on her. She has no fouls. Janiah Barker does have three personal fouls, which is huge for Texas A&M right now, having three at this stage of the game with no Lauren Ware today, who is one of their star forwards, who averaged about eight rebounds per game, nine points per game, out today with a lower body injury. And Barker got off to a hot start in this game, has eight of their first 17 points for Texas A&M. They just announced it over the PA here officially that that foul is on Janiah Barker. And that's huge. Rogers on the bench, and then you got Markowski back in the game. And naturally, Barker will have to sit. You'd have to think remainder of this half. Absolutely. The three fouls, absolutely. So it'll be decision moments and times definitely for Joni Taylor the rest of the way when it comes to Janiah Barker who has eight of her first 17 points. So Lay Williams, a bit strong on a three there. Nisley's been spectacular in the early stages for a Nebraska team that's holding their largest lead of the game at eight. Darian White defended tightly by Williams. Spins in the paint. What a spin move it was. Couldn't quite put the style points on at the very end. It didn't connect, but I mean, man, how shifty is White? White, a really good defender as well, matched up with KK Green. Sahara Jones curls around Markowski, extra pass, Williams. Will this one go down for it will? Needed momentum. That's how you step up when your number's called and connect beyond the arc, which is really what the Aggies are going to need. Someone get a step up and hit outside shot. Williams' his first NCAA tournament game. Markowski, not her first NCAA tournament experience. We're so happy to be back on this stage. She's got her first point since that early foul trouble that she got into, picking up the early two quick ones. Looks like this. I believe they got a kickball on Hake. We have Kelsey Riggs, Nikki Vargas, and Tine Gumake in the studio. Coming up next. Our Dove inside the studio crew. And a fun, fun start here in Corvallis. Oregon State won the first matchup of the evening over Eastern Washington. Beavers are back in the second round, back in the big dance this year. And these two teams trying to punch a ticket to see that Oregon State team on Sunday. Oh, the pass down low, Redwell by Koulibaly. That's great hustle from Koulibaly getting back to the defensive end. And you credit her because she's kind of having a slow night. Coming out of nowhere, because we know what Shelly can do. The pass was right there, but Koulibaly beats it. 
Fake, catch and shoot. Rebound secured by Koulibaly. Feels like a big final 240 here in this opening half for the Aggies. They've had so much resilience this year to different challenges. Another challenge today, and now in-game, Janaya Barker with three fouls, having to sit like the rest of the way in this half. I mean, Barker's been everything for them offensively, so the Aggies, you can see it, the struggle a bit with Barker out the game. Ten-win jump for Texas A&M this year. Nebraska had a hot run in the Big Ten tournament. They came up short in the title game. Right, right place, right time. Another opportunity here for the Huskers. Jazz Shelley. A foul called down low. Going to be on Nebraska. Looks like they got Annika Stewart on the box out. Her second foul. Having the, oh yeah. That was the easy one. She pulled Sahara Jones right down. I think the fans were happy about it. They saw them battling a bit early <laughs> on, so we're just waiting for the call. But a missed shot by Shelly, but Jason, her release is so quick. So quick. She gets that thing. She's pulling it. Just a matter of time until she heats up. Shelly is one of sevens in the field. But averaging 21 a game over her last five, entering the NCAA tournament. Played some good defense there. They came up short. Shot clock didn't reset. Kulabali doing work on the glass. Couldn't finish. Barker's not in the game. Kulabali's really got to step up. Kulabali had 32 in their SEC tournament loss to South Carolina. Where Sahara Jones went down. Opened up space for Nebraska. Holy. A&M comes away unscathed there. Jones tried to push the tempo, maybe a little over anxious in what they were trying to do. Another turnover. Over anxious, I think, is the best way to describe it. I think the Aggies got to calm down. The 11 turnovers to Nebraska's just three. Definitely playing a difference on the scoreboard right now. Approaching the final minute of the opening half. Shelly affects the game in so many ways. Even when she isn't scoring, tried to go with a no-look pass, but it was knocked out of the air that time by Tanea Hilton. Window here for AM to pull within a couple of possessions heading into the locker room. Poked away but a foul call. Koulibaly went to the ground <laughs> super hard, but got great position. Have another look at it. Koulibaly's posting up. Ooh. I don't know, Jason, what do you think about that one? I think she might have got the chair pulled out from under her and yeah. lost balance. But I don't know. Then again, she fell really hard forward towards the floor, so maybe I'm not seeing it from the correct angle. Definitely kind of depends on the angle from which you see it. And as you said, heard the fall to the floor there. Arm contact is what the officials call. Williams hit one three earlier. That one would have been big had it gone down. Meanwhile, shot clock and game clock practically the same here for Nebraska to wind down this half. Hake notices it. Bench notices it. Hake being pressured though. That was touched by Green so she can enter the front court once again. Eight seconds left in the half. Hake poised, driving, couldn't finish, no time. Two seconds, long distance team off the iron. Seven point game at the break. Well, two teams that have contrasting styles and it's kind of what it looked like in the opening half. It was a feel-out process and seven points separating Nebraska and Texas A&M. We'll send it to the studio. Dub in the studio coming up next.
Welcome to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. First round action between the six seed Nebraska Cornhuskers and the 11 seed at Texas A&M Aggies. Two teams that didn't make the tournament last year. Back in the big dance this year. Jason Ross Jr., Asia Ellison. Happy to be with you here in Corvallis, Oregon. So, Asia, Nebraska up seven. Didn't necessarily feel like the Aggies were down seven. Both teams still trying to find their rhythm here. Absolutely. It's been a very funky first half in terms of finding rhythm. You had some scoring, but then you had some droughts as well. So I think going into the locker rooms, coaches want to see who's going to come out with that energy and who can find the rhythm on the shot. And stuff about the interior, lots of foul trouble with the post. Let's check out the game track brought to you by Invesco. Some of those numbers, like we were talking about it, there it's just been wave after wave, kind of up and down. Foul trouble has played a key role in that as well, especially to the forwards for both teams. Yeah, you see Barker, three fouls, and Markowski, two fouls, picked up quick, so had to sit quite a bit. So you believe that that's what really threw the teams off rhythm because Markowski got a hot start, and so did Barker. So when they sat out, it really did change things in terms of rhythm for both teams offensively. Nebraska does have the seven-point lead. Markowski and Barker are both on the floor for their respective teams, and they appear to be matched up with each other down low. Nisley was a bright spot in the first half for this Nebraska team that made the NIT last year. Was so motivated at the beginning of the summer all the way up until this point to make this NCAA tournament. Felt there was definitely unfinished business. Get a foul on Natalie Potts, who's played a key role in them returning to this stage as Big Ten Freshman of the Year. Now KK Green, one of the longest tenured Aggies. Her role elevated as well when India Rogers went down in February, had a surgery, India Rogers, that she miraculously returned from in two weeks to clean up a lower body injury. KK Green's role elevated during that time. India Rogers is back as well, but on the bench to begin this second half for Texas A&M. Well, the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship first round coverage continues tomorrow at 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on ABC. Paige Beckers and UConn host Jackson State. Then Caitlin Clark leads Iowa against Holy Cross. And ESPN has Kent State taking on Notre Dame at 2.15 Eastern time, 11.15 Pacific. And it's Juju Watkins and USC hosting Texas A&M Corpus Christi. All games are also available on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Asia, I'm so excited for, we're in a Pac-12 location in the country to see Juju Watkins. We have an earlier time, Eastern time, than people are used to having to stay up and possibly watch her during the regular season. She has put on a show this year. So is the Pac-12 conference as a whole. We've got Big Ten versus SEC right now. And that three comes up short by Nisley. And you take it back to that graphic, the players to watch tomorrow with Beckers, Clark, Hidalgo, Juju Watkins. I really want to see how well those two freshmen play with Juju and Hidalgo in their first tournament. Barker shovels it out. Sahara Jones rounding off on that three. Five-point game. It's felt so tight. That three will extend the Nebraska lead, though. Logan nisley has been the trusty player to go to offensively for Nebraska today. Just a freshman, but not playing like it. Time now for our Xfinity Most Reliable Player. Logan Nisley right now for Nebraska has been just that. Been that in a bag of chips, all that and then some. And she's, we talked about the scoring drought with Nebraska. She's one of the only players really shooting an efficient floor game. So that's just how you step up as a freshman. When you, and when you talk Nebraska basketball this season, the players you typically associate with being in double figures, their points lower today. Shelley, one of seven from the field right now. And Markowski dealt with the foul trouble earlier. So Nisley stepping up as a freshman in her first NCAA tournament game has not looked like any sort of nerves are popping up for her on this stage. Got an illegal screen here. Take a look at it on Texas A&M. Yep. Yeah, KK Green got the arms out. You got to stay set, can't extend. It's an automatic call. Nisley guarded by Green. 
Green, a tenacious on-ball defender, trying to cool down Nisley, who's in double figures. Shelley went with the no-look pass, tapped out of bounds, though. Sahara Jones got the deflection. Aggies, one of eight SEC teams to make the NCAA tournament. India Rogers will check in. Corner three, look who it is again. Logan Nisley continues her NCAA tournament debut party. It's been a good one for the Husker fans. I mean, she's on fire. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. If she's got to carry it, she's got to carry it. It's been absolutely impressive. Has her team up 11, and she has 14 points. Averages six on the season. Aisha Koulibaly, they would love to see her get going. Does not there, Markowski secures it. Up to Jazz Shelley, even when Shelley isn't scoring, it affects the game in so many ways. Potts was fouled there. Gonna stick with Nebraska. Great execution, Aggies, come on, look, everybody's head is turned to the inbounder. No one is even looking at Nisley, who has just been absolutely on fire. So the Cornhuskers, listen, you gotta make the defense pay for their laps. And now, up top, Moriarty! Another Husker three! A team with one of the best, best uh, core bench reactions in the country is up, and they are enthusiastic. By the way, as you're going back to that last replay of the Nisley three before, I love that the entire bench was pointing to Nisley. Like they saw like it before everyone right else saw it, right? right? Another inbounds three. I mean, same thing, different player. Everyone's facing the inbounder. Got to have your head on a swivel there, swivel there, and they're just able to find another player, able to connect from three. So many weapons for the Cornhuskers. Moriarty caught a nice stride in the WNIT last season, but that, that wasn't their goal. This is their goal, to be on this stage and win NCAA tournament games. Nebraska hasn't won an NCAA tournament game since 2014. Their head coach, Amy Williams, searching for her first NCAA tournament victory at the school where she played in the 90s. Moriarty the rebound here after her three on the last possession. Largest lead for Nebraska. Nisley, that same spot where she hit the three before. Shelly dribbled it off her foot. It's Markowski going out to corral it. Amy Williams calling out signals from the sideline. Six on the shot clock. Markowski calling for it. Koulibaly, Koulibaly read it all the way, though. Here comes Koulibaly. Got her own board and put it up for the second chance opportunity. And I love the body control initially on that attack. Missed the shot, but stayed with it. Able to put it back in. Just the first points for Koulibaly today. Yeah, they've done a great job slowing her down. I mean, she did have some turnovers early on, but just a very slow game for Koulibaly, which has made a big difference as well. A player who averages 13 points per game for Texas A&M. It's Nisley. She's red hot right now. Bit strong. Markowski, tenacious on the offensive glass. Goes right to the rim and puts it off the glass and down. Markowski, a walking double-double all season. That's starting to creep in. Nice spin move in the lane, and here's Koulibaly starting to discover her rhythm. Yeah, she's going to have to bring some life back for the Aggies. Janiyah Barker, she's sitting there at the scores table, so that'll be a good look for a and as well when she gets back in the game. Markowski, just a blue-collar player. Look at the hustle here. Able to get the deflection or get the seal there, connect on the basket. Mentioned career highs for her in points and rebounds. This year put in a lot of work in the offseason. A Lincoln, Nebraska native, grew up rooting for the Huskers. Her dad, Andy, who's 6'8", played for Nebraska, was on their 1998 NCAA tournament team. Grew up living and breathing. Nebraska sports. There she is as a, a young Husker fan. She had 23 points, 13 boards in that tournament title loss 
to Iowa. Her journey here, one that started as a, a hometown kid in Lincoln, Nebraska. Such an incredible story when you grow, when you grow up looking up to a team and just dreaming of playing, and she's here in the moment. I mean, so full circle. Living the dream. Into the lane goes KK Green. Now that you've got to get a stop, you've got to continue to stop score. You can't trade baskets. You definitely can't trade for a three. That's what their head coach, Joni Taylor, told us. Can't get into a shooting contest with Nebraska tonight. NCAA first round action after dark here in Corvallis. Thanks for staying up late with us if you're out east. Both of these fan bases on central time. A little coffee boost for this one. It's been fun. Down low, foul pulled before that buzzer sounded. So should be free throws coming up when we return. Veronica Stewart. Nebraska up 12, 4.48 to go in the third quarter. Both these teams want to play Oregon State on Sunday. A little flashback here for Texas A&M fans. 2011 NCAA Tournament National Championship. Won it on what was an incredible run that began in the Dallas region at the time. Took down Notre Dame in that championship. Knocked off number one seeds Baylor and Stanford in Raps, winning that title game 76 to 70. Went 33 and 5 that year. Asia Ellison, you know a little something about Texas AM hoops yourself. Just a little some some. There you see me on the box out. I'm pretty sure Coach Jody would love to have me on her squad as they love the rebound. But I mean, just such a great year. It was one year that I had at AM, but you know, a very special year. Played under Gary Blair, did play against Joni when she was at Georgia. Just so much fun. You've been teaching me all sorts of things this week in our practices that we go through the day before the games. Ducks and dives and post moves. How to secure your position down low. We get some good forwards amongst this group. Oregon State, if you weren't with us earlier. Knocked off Eastern Washington to secure their ticket to the second round. Opposite away, Ayesha Kulabali. She can get going in transition and can heat up in a hurry. Just a 12-point game. Texas A&M definitely within striking distance if they can get on a run. It's been Nebraska that has had more of the positive offensive runs in this game. And it makes all the difference being able to play with Parker and they have Rodgers as well back in the game. Barker had three fouls in the opening half. Callan Hake, a spin move, and she got fouled. Yeah, Hake just aggressive on her attack. And yeah, I mean, that's easy. Rogers came down with a hand. Hake, a Victoria, Minnesota native, played in her home state in the Big Ten tournament. Really good three-point shooter. Her, her brother plays second base at North Dakota State, and they actually played Nebraska earlier this week. But it was the day that Callan Hake and the Huskers had to, had to travel here. So she was a little upset she didn't get to see her brother play in Lincoln, but entire family watching and supporting her and the Nebraska Cornhuskers who are trying to get their first NCAA tournament win since 2014. Rodgers off a screen and a clean look. Markowski secures another rebound, her seventh. Markowski searching. It's Coley trying to get on the scoreboard and does from long distance. Another Minnesota native on this Nebraska roster. She has been efficient in her minutes when they use her. I mean, so balanced, so dynamic. The attack from the Cornhuskers. Everybody putting up points on the board. Coley, another player who was on their last NCAA tournament team. How about that? Snaking to the rim. Kulabali just doing all she can to keep Texas A&M in this game. Yeah, there it is. They are on a different level, and Kulabali has life in her offensive attack. Shelly dribbled it off her foot, corralled by Barker, up to Koulibaly. Coley's back, but Koulibaly 
and one. I mean, really, that play right there is the first time that I've really seen A&M do exactly what they do best, and that's getting a stop, converting in transition again. They get the stop here for Bali. Just great switching sides, being able to connect, drawing the foul. I mean, you said it, Jason, they just can't trade buckets. You got to continue to get your score, but then get a stop on defense as well. Stop the score. That's going to be the name of the game for the Aggies, getting on the glass, being aggressive, trying to get to the free throw line. Koulibaly scored their last six. All of a sudden, in double figures, trying to will her team back into this one. Aisha Koulibaly, originally from Mali. Her family watching. Mali's about seven hours ahead. They're tuned in, and her sister, her little sister Mariam, she said she watches every game. She's in Canada right now, tuning in. A lot of support from the Kulabala family. Stripped down low, KK Green able to merge out of the pack here. Uh, crossover, and now they'll back it up. Offensive foul called. Going to go back the opposite way to Nebraska. Yeah, it's great anticipation by White just being set up there to be able to get that call. You have another look at it here. MJ was diving but not paying attention. That is a classic uh, guard move defensively that I absolutely hated when I was a pro. <laughs> Coming down thinking I had a good cut, a good run, and the guard steps in. It's just, it's the worst. I can see the PTSD I in your really eyes. I really am feeling it right now. That's the one right there. <laughs> Nebraska's capitalized off some turnovers today. They have 14 points off turnovers. Up 12. 218 to go in the third quarter. And they've gotten it done with different faces today. Missley ran into a corner. Markowski, Shelley contested. Battle for the board. Who can find it? And looks like it's going to go back to Texas A&M in this physical, physical game. So these two teams, again, winner will go on to play Oregon State on Sunday. And then you see the teams right below that if you were to win that second round game, you'd play one of those teams. You're seeing Ole Miss, Marquette, Notre Dame, or Kent State eventually in a Sweet 16 game. But right now, business to be taken care of, business to be taken care of on Sunday if you can get there. Watch out for Ole Miss. Remember Coach Yo and Ole Miss made a run last season. Yep, knocked off Stanford, upset Stanford in Palo Alto. There's a three there from Koulibaly. And look out, it's okay, a single Koulibaly, digit game. Koulibaly, yes. Oh, she got another steal. Koulibaly on a heater right now. Aisha Koulibaly couldn't quite finish. It looks like she lost her balance almost underneath the rim. It's Hilton, though. Well short on the three. 8-0 Texas A&M run nearly got within seven there. Right? So Koulibaly after that play does the shirt tug. The shirt tug means that she needed to come out. So she's on the bench right now. But let me tell you something. She has carried the momentum that yeah. she has given for the Aggies so invaluable right now in game. So I'm, she's going to get a quick breather and I bet she's going to come right back in. Carried is the right word in this third quarter for what Koulibaly has helped do for this Aggie team to get them right back into it and within single digits on an 8-0 run. Jazz Shelley, the kind of player that can settle things down for you. This will stay on this end. Tapped away. With Joni Taylor clapping on the Texas A&M sideline. Knows her team is, is on to something right now. They can keep this momentum going into the fourth quarter. A long lob picked off. Aggies read that all the way on the intentions for Markowski. And MJ got caught on that screen, so that's great help by Hilton being there. Like you said, read it, read it well. Hilton, another player, really gifted. They call her supremely gifted on the defensive end. Toronto, Ontario native, searching. Jones backs it out. Markowski matched up against her. Five to shoot. Barker against Kroll. Oh, and out of hot with the ball took. It's going to be a shot clock violation, though. Number zero, Barry and White. 
Joni Taylor, who you just saw in that shot, so proud of what her Texas A&M team has overcome this season, having to overcome another hurdle today with no Lauren Ware in the lineup, was nursing an injury. It was a game-time decision, couldn't go. Ware, player, if you're seeing Texas A&M for the first time, she averages nine points per game, about seven boards per game without her presence, but still battling. And within nine, shot clock off for Darian White and Nebraska. Six seconds to operate. Foul pulled. Nebraska is in the bonus. And they got Tanea Hilton there. Kendall Coley checks in. Really good defender, possibly Asia wanting to bring in her length for what is still going to be about six seconds left for Texas A&M. Absolutely tremendous length there with Coley. And then even I do have to say with White, just kind of finding her groove again since she's been injured, hasn't really had a lot of rhythm, but she looks so good, so shifty, so crafty. Time here, Green. He's Texas A&M will go into the fourth, down 10. Nebraska trying to get to Sunday. Texas A&M, a comeback push. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Fourth quarter will be fun. On the other side, staying up late here in Corvallis. Nebraska's knocked down six threes today. Asia, this is something they can do and they can heat up in a hurry. Exactly, and that's been the name of the game and why Nebraska is up 10 right now. Because you saw the Aggies go on a run, right? But you can't trade twos with threes, and Nebraska has been doing just that. Able to connect from beyond the arc, able to play inside out. Different players shooting it from beyond the arc, but then again, we got to shout out Logan Nisley, four of six, the freshman coming ready to play. In her first NCAA tournament game, has looked unfazed. So you see Markowski also starting to step up as well for Nebraska. Aisha Koulibaly has been the offense for Texas A&M in this second half. Charged them on a run that got them back within single digits. She's on the floor, five in black. Here's KK Green, quick pull up. But look who it is on the doorstep, Koulibaly. Second chance, more points for her. Yeah, Koulibaly is looking to take over. And we know what she can do. We talked about it earlier. She had 32 against South Carolina despite the loss. She just shows her prowess and what she's able to do on both ends of the game. We had a chance to talk to Koulibaly yesterday. Played her first three years at Auburn. Potts couldn't finish. Jones secures the rebound. Joni Taylor asks Aisha Koulibaly, if you come here, are you willing to change your style of play and potentially score less points for us to win? And she said, yes, I just want to be in the NCAA tournament. I want to be on this stage. I want to win for this Texas A&M team. And she's got her team within eight. Almost solely on her offensive play alone. Barker, a little strong. This lead, the rebound, and she's fouled by Jones. Zahara Jones will check out. Soleil Williams will check in for Texas A&M. So a, a little smaller. Shelly lost it down low and a turnover. Connection wasn't quite there with Potts. A connection that has been there all season long. Now can the Aggies capitalize on the offensive end is the question. It is going to be a grind. They're going to have to grind it out to finish, especially when you talk about the way the shooting has been in this game. But in order to do that, again, we said it. Can't trade twos for threes, and they got to capitalize, and they get stopped when you get on the offensive end. You're right, Asia. The, the door is open here. Barker had a good look. Koulibaly got called for the foul on the rebound. It was a good look. Koulibaly maybe thought she was pushed. <laughs> yeah. 
up to you, Not discretion. Sure, I'll take it. Sometimes yeah. you got to, you know, it's always worth a try to try to get the refs to try to talk the refs into a call, but got a good officiating crew here on the phase. Yep, two great crews on hand for this one. Potts for a three-point try falls right into the hands of Nisley, who has been anywhere and everywhere today, and goes down low to Markowski, who's going to go to the free throw line. Just the persistence and effort. Amy Williams trying to lock down what would be her first NCAA tournament win as head coach of Nebraska on her birthday. If they can get it. She told us that she went for a birthday walk with her husband and by the time they got down to the first floor of the hotel they saw some of the Nebraska players in the, in the conference room. This is in the morning already drawn up potential questions for shoot around about defensive coverages and plays they wanted to dissect. Two teams locked in on the journey to get back to the big dance this year after not making it last year. Ten points separating Nebraska and Texas A&M. Foul called on Jazz Shelley. Just her first. And she got the foul call there. You see that mismatch with Koulibaly and Shelley. So they got to get it. I'm getting it to Koulibaly all day. Things getting a little chippy. A little disagreement between Barker yeah. and Potts. <laughs> Disagreements over defensive positioning. Happens every now and then. Down low. That's been happening a lot. Koulibaly scoring. Every time. And we talked about the beauty of her game, the mismatches that she exposes, whether she's playing on the perimeter or in the paint. So Koulibaly, the person to go to right now for the Aggies. Leads back down to eight with just under eight to go. Maddie Kroll is going to check in for Nebraska here. Two former Big 12 foes back in the day. These schools met every year from 1996 to 2010 before they made their respective departures. Nebraska to the Big Ten, Texas A&M to the SEC. Now locking horns again. Over a decade after those conference changes, what a quick drive from White. She can turn on the Jets in a hurry. Yeah, White, the foot speed is just so hard to match with. Put so much pressure on one-on-one -on -one defense, able to draw the contact. I mean, that is just exactly what she does. Nebraska will shoot free throws the rest of the way. Still got 7.34 to go in this fourth quarter. In the bonus, what's been a physical game. Well, for the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. Your home for all 90 NCAA championships. You're going to see a lot of potentially future WNBA talent throughout the course of the next few weeks as well. We'll have the WNBA draft for you on ESPN on April 15th. Right now, 10 points separating Nebraska and Texas A&M. After those free throws, nearly a giveaway. Green able to save it. 10 on the shot clock. Koulibaly's been red hot. Another, another three it is as well. Back to a seven-point game. Koulibaly has carried this team. We got to see her spot chart on the floor. She's been able, they've been able to score inside and out, but it's literally been Koulibaly herself. Getting touches in the paint, scoring from outside. They double throw. Oh, reverse opportunity for White that doesn't turn into two. You mentioned it. Doors open for Texas A&M if they can capitalize. India Rogers is coming to the scores table, one of their best scorers all season. Koulibaly's been their best scorer in this game. To MJ Johnson, cashes in, all net. Five-point game. And MJ Johnson, I feel like I, we haven't given her enough credit what she's been able to do off the bench, specifically guarding Markowski. We haven't seen her. She's not a go-to player offensively, but that's her job right there. 
to make Markowski's life miserable, but to be able to step up and hit a shot. Wow, they made that shot very tough for Alexis Markowski, but she hit it anyway. This is what you love about March. The ups and downs can never count a team out within a game. Texas A&M did not go anywhere when they went down double digits. Parker step back. Oh, it was online. Another three for Texas A&M. Four point game. Closest they've been since going down double digits. Outside shots are contagious right now for the Aggies. Everybody looking to connect and get a piece from beyond the arc. And an Aggie team that doesn't make a ton of threes. Shelly, nice one-legged fade. Crafty from the Aussie. This is going to be a fun finish here in Corvallis. Both of these teams wanting to play Oregon State on Sunday in the second round. A lot of work to do, though, over the final five minutes to get to that point. Green opts to drive. That's what you wanted to see them do more of. Green went down, immediately grabbing her leg, though. And in pain on the baseline. It was a tough take, an awkward plan, a very tough shot. Have another look at it. Couldn't see her coming down on the angle there. But have another look at it. Definitely on the landing here. Yeah, landed right there awkwardly on the leg. Lots of force. She's grabbing her lower leg, getting looked at. Immediately grabbed the leg and in pain. Staff out tending to her. Good to see her putting weight on that leg and walking off to the sideline. Have another look at it. Just aggressive on the attack here and comes down awkwardly on the foot, holding her lower leg. So she's going to go back. She goes back into her training room to get looked at. India Rogers now back in the lineup for KK Green. India Rogers, who returned in the SEC tournament from her injury and still working her way back to getting the full speed. Didn't start today, but on the floor now in a crucial role. MJ Johnson guarding Markowski. That'll be a key matchup down the stretch. Markowski, she can hit those. Flared out. Barker the board. Now opposite away, Koulibaly is such a threat in transition. Two-point game. It has been a tremendous fourth quarter for both teams, but the Aggies specifically because of Koulibaly and what she's been able to do, she has absolutely changed the momentum offensively for the Aggies. Nebraska calls a timeout. This is getting tight. These are the moments we love in March. Two-point game with 4.17 to go in the fourth. Let's take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance. Aisha Koulibaly, 23 points, all of which have come in the second half. Exactly. Better late than never. Voting well for the Aggies. And you talk about her floor game. She's been able to get it done all over in the paint out from the perimeter. She's exactly doing what she needs to do, and that's showing her versatility, exposing mismatches. You put a guard on her, she's going to bully you, bulldoze into the paint. She can speed by the big. You give her too much space, she can hit it from beyond the arc. She is the X factor right now for the Aggies in the second half. We talked to her yesterday, and she had a motivated look in her eye. You see, largest comebacks in NCAA tournament history. Texas A&M has it back in 2017. They came back from down 21 to beat Penn. They trailed by as much as 17 points today against Nebraska. A lead for the Cornhuskers that has dwindled down to two. And on this upcoming possession, Texas A&M with a chance to tie or take the lead. 
And remember the Cornhuskers, they blew the lead in the championship game against Iowa. So I know they're going to have to really lock in, close out, close the game out. Yep. They want to get the win. They find themselves in a very similar spot. Trying to close out. Near steal there from Nisley. What are the keys? You've played in these tournaments, it, in these moments, with the pressure that could be associated with it to stay poised. That's it right there. You stay poised. You got to execute. And more importantly, you have to push through that wall. I know bodies are tired. The time change. But which team is going to push through that wall? That shot went around about halfway down and out for Texas A&M fans. 3.30 to go in this first round game. Six seed Nebraska, 11 seed Texas A&M. Nebraska had a 17-point lead that's poked away from behind. Nice defensive play there from Williams. It's going to stay at this end. Great on-ball defense here by Williams, poking it from behind. And we talked about it. White is not an easy person to guard, but that's just a great defensive stop right there. She got in front of her a little bit, so Williams able to just get the poke from behind. It turned out to be one of the best games of the day. A throwaway. Nebraska's had a few too many of those as well throughout the course of this Texas A&M comeback. This is a huge offensive possession for the Aggies. It would have put them in a position where they can tie the game, they can get the lead if they were to get a three. You can feel the nerves from both fan bases right now. We've had just one tie in the game. MJ Johnson underneath the rim couldn't quite get the angle she wanted. White calling for a player with a ton of experience, the grad student. They go down low to Markowski, their bread and butter. Couldn't finish, pots there, blocks. Barker got a piece of that. Here's Barker offensively, pull up for the tie. Rebound tipped by Markowski into the hands of White. And Joni looked at Aisha Koulibaly and said, come get the ball, take over. That's exactly what they got to do. She's the player they need to get the ball to on the offensive end. All 23 of Koulibaly's points in the second half. Oh, Rodgers went for a steal, couldn't get it. White nearly had it ripped away by Koulibaly. Got it back, eight on the shot clock. It's Pops in the corner. Good look, didn't drop. a and still within two. The Aggies are working defensively, but they've got to be able to connect right here on the offensive end. Who can step up on the biggest of stages? Near turnover there, now they can breathe a bit. Still 10 on the shot clock. Rogers floating, fouled. Free throws coming up for India Rogers. I'll take it, not settling for an outside shot, being aggressive on the tack, drawing the contact. India Rogers, a veteran player. We know she sat out a little bit. But this is a player, she transfers to Morgan, high IQ, changes the pace of the game. It was the fourth on Potts for a Texas A&M team that only shoots 67% as a team from the line. India Rogers is one of their best. She shoots 86% from the free throw line individually. This is who you want at the line down the stretch in an NCAA tournament game. And she goes a big two for two to tie the game at 56. Texas A&M has stormed back from down 17 to not us up at 56 apiece with 138 to go. What a game this has been. Now, if you're in these huddles in this moment, Asia, walk me through both sidelines. Well, the Cornhuskers, they've had a few turnovers, not able to connect on shots. So they just got to stay poised, run their offense, execute their offense. And I think it starts with getting the ball into Markowski, finding ways into the paint. I think White's been very good on her attack as well. Just continuing to be aggressive on their attack, get into the paint, find shooters fanning out. But 
more importantly, that's where you gotta go in the Aggies. They're gonna have to defend, they're gonna have to be disciplined, not foul. That's gonna be key for AM on a defensive end. Very true on all of those points at Nebraska. You look at the Cornhuskers right now, a scoring drought of nearly four minutes. During that time, Texas AM has gone in a 6 0 run to tie this game. In those possessions as well, the Cornhuskers, they look very, very sped up, causing turnovers. See the second half numbers favoring Texas AM. Aggies in search of their first NCAA tournament win since 2021. Nebraska wants their first since 2014. And as you noted, a little deja vu for Nebraska. They were played in a, a very tight Big Ten tournament game in the title against Iowa that they fell short in in overtime after having a lead. And now down the stretch they go with a 125 left in a tie game. Jazz Shelley turning the corner. Ten on the shot clock for Nebraska. In the midst of a scoring drought, Calvin Haight back to Shelley. Long into the hands of Rogers and AM with a chance to take the lead with one minute to go. Offensive foul called. Hake took the charge. Coach Joni perplexed at the call, and we'll see. Have another look at it here. I mean, it looks clean like a charge to me. It's a great yep. call. I'd agree. What are you looking for out of this Nebraska possession here? It's got to be poised to get a shot in. This is a Nebraska team that's played in situations pretty much the entire Big Ten tournament, but especially coming in that uh, that championship game against Iowa. Will they be able to close out? That's hey. the player right there. Yep. Got to get it to Markowski. Markowski puts Nebraska up to 35 seconds to go. You gotta attack Pot. Pot's got four fouls. Barker doubled on the baseline. Back out to Rogers. 22 seconds left. Rogers will take it for the lead. Off the mark. Following up is Cornabelli. Count that. And she was fouled with a chance to go to the line and give Texas A&M the lead. Kula Bali, the absolute X factor. Miss here from Rodgers. You don't give up on the play. The tip in, the contact, able to connect. It is Kula Bali who has been unstoppable, giving the Aggies the lead. This game has had everything in it, and now an incredible shot. They're going to the monitor to put the up. correct time back on the clock. As they're going to the monitor to check the time and hopefully put the correct time back on the clock here, we have 16.7 left in the fourth quarter of what is now a tie game between Texas A&M and Nebraska. A rejuvenated second half for the Aggie faithful. Coming back from down 17. The correct time on the clock is 17.7. So you add a little bit of time, 17.7 to go in this fourth quarter. 58, 58. But Kulabali will go to the line with all 25 of her points coming in the second half. She's one of one at the line today, 74% on the season. Big test for Kulabali. Free throws huge down the stretch in game situations like this. Biggest free throw she's ever taken in the Texas A&M uniform right here. And she hits it. Gives Texas A&M their first lead since they were up 11 to 10 in the first quarter. The rare free throw replay here, and you need it. Two bounces off the iron and out. Listen, I'll take it. <laughs> Probably hung up there. It's for, dropping, it's yeah, dropping. <laughs> hung up there a while if you're an Aggie fan. <laughs> <laughs> but here now on the other end, the ball, better believe that thing is going into number 40 in white Markowski. 
That's where they went the last time Nebraska scored. I mean, they need the best shot possible. They're only down one. They can get it to you. You don't need the three-point basket. They can get up one just from a simple shot at the rim. And Markowski, that's the player to do it. And advancing it here into the front court, Shelly. The veteran guard, did they get a foul away from the ball? Looks like they did on KK Green. So foul called on KK Green. And now bonus free throws coming up for Nebraska. Yeah, you have a look at KK Green. I mean, just grabbing her the entire possession and off the ball. Logan Nisley will be the free throw shooter for Nebraska. 80% on the season. She was such a pivotal part of their offense in the opening half. Has 14 points on the day. In her first NCAA tournament game. As cool as can be at the free throw line to tie it. And gives Nebraska the lead back on the second free throw. With 14.6 left on the fourth quarter clock. So now the Aggies, they want the best shot possible, but they don't need the three. Try and get the two, try to get to the free throw line, try to create off the bounce. That is number five. That is Koulibaly. She's going to do that. I think they're going to look to get her the ball. Lots of options there scoring as far as players that really have prowess attacking down here. But Koulibaly has just been unstoppable. At this moment, if you're Koulibaly, you're almost calling for it in that huddle. Yeah. I mean, you can tell. You can see it on her face. She's ready. This is her moment. She's playing with the utmost absolute confidence. By the way, Nebraska still has a foul to give. So keep an eye on if they opt to use that. A&M with the timeout, able to advance the ball. And Pock has four fouls, so she's the player that does not want to give that foul. And she's guarding Koulibaly right now. They go out to Rogers. And she got to get it to her. Rogers with 10 seconds left. Down one to Barker with five seconds into the paint. No call. No call. And then it looked like Nebraska got the timeout. 2.6 left on the fourth quarter clock. It is a timeout called. Your judgment was there a foul. Have another look at it here from this angle. Looks like feet got tangled up, perhaps. Got tangled up. But no foul called. It went right into the hands there of Jazz Shelley. Yeah, Barker just going in off balance, but I don't think there was any contact to the extreme of a foul call. But I just think in that possession, you have that cool ball, he has to have the ball. It's been adjusted to 3.1. So 3.1 now on the game clock, up from the 2.6 you're screen, seeing right now on your screen. It'll be Nebraska ball. And you'd have to think a, a very, very quick foul. Yeah, very quick foul. First, maybe try and get a five, uh, five a violation, yep. but if not, you have to foul. Send to the free throw line. Inbounding is Nisley. Got it in to Jazz Shelley. And a foul with 1.7 left on the clock. Jazz Shelley is who they wanted to get the ball to because she's an 88% free throw shooter. Maddie Kroll will check in for the Huskers. Amy Williams told us earlier today when the conversation started with Jazz Shelley in the offseason about wanting to come back, it was because there was unfinished business. They wanted to get to this stage. It couldn't be more fitting that it's Jazz Shelley at the free throw line here trying to ice it for Nebraska. 
They wanted to be back on this stage so much after They're not making it a year ago. Readjust the clock. They're going to readjust the clock again here. The game clock will be adjusted to 2.2. So 2.2 instead of 1.7. Nebraska in search of their first NCAA tournament win since 2014. It's been a minute, a decade. It would be Amy Williams first as Nebraska head coach. And possibly on her birthday. Celebrating that today. Still 2.2 seconds left before they can celebrate a first round victory. And crucial free throws here. First one is down for Jazz Shelley. Around and off on the second. Very quick timeout from Joni Taylor. And still 1.4 to go. They have the chance to advance the ball. That's plenty of time to get a shot up. Plenty of time, as you mentioned, and advancing it with the timeout will put him in the front court. So on that note, what are you trying to draw up here to potentially tie it or win it? And they're only down two as well, so they don't yep. need the three. I'm trying to get a two. I'm trying to get it in there. Koulibaly, the person to go to. They got Barker in there as well. Sixty one fifty nine Nebraska up but one point four to go and Texas A&M will be able to advance this ball with the timeout called as the officials go to replay here once again to make sure the clock is correct one point four would be enough to get a shot up but could there be more time potentially added on here for Texas A&M a team that trailed by 17 in this game came back to at one point take a one point lead in the final minute and a half resilience personified for Joni Taylor's team that has had to overcome so many injury hurdles this season had to overcome the game another will be adjusted to 1.7 so 1.7 had more time for a shot release Sahara Jones will inbound. 1.7. It's Rodgers for the win. Off the mark. And Nebraska survives the comeback bid from Texas A&M. Big Red is back in the big dance. And they'll march on to the second round to meet Oregon State on Sunday. What a game that had absolutely everything tonight. Aggies put their all into it. Just was not able to connect here on this shot with India Rogers. But this is March basketball. This was ex so exciting. Late night here in Corvallis, and we were just in for an absolute treat. Both matchups, but Nebraska coming out on top, so they're going to take on Oregon State in this next round. Can't help but feel your heart beat out of your chest when watching these games and the emotions of March. He embraces the disappointment on the opposite side. These players pour their hearts out to get to these moments. Hard.